Hello everyone. This video is about uh, using persistent storage with OpenShift version 3. Um, in order to understand why we need persistent storage, let's look at uh, an example first of a non-persistent storage. If you have seen my earlier videos, you would already know how to spin up a MySQL application component on OpenShift. And I did exactly the same thing. I have a um, ephemeral MySQL database that is spun up. And let's use it first to see how it looks like. First, I'll do port forwarding to my MySQL database. Now, this command will port forward to the to the part that is running the MySQL database. And uh, it will, in any traffic that I send to my local host on port 3306 will be forwarded to this part. Now let's connect to this database. Here, I'm connecting to my local host. It's 127.0.0.1. And uh, the, I'm connecting to port 3306 because this gets forwarded to the part. Uh, I'm using username veer and password veer, which I gave when I was creating that uh, database. If I say show databases, it will show me a sample database. I'll use that. I'll add a table named users. And I'll insert a few rows. Now, if I do select star from users, you'll see that there are three records. I'll exit from this database. Now, there is some data that I added to this database, right? Let me cancel this port forwarding. If you see, I have one instance of MySQL running here. And let me go and kill that. OC delete pod. What you'll observe is immediately the replication controller acts immediately. And uh, this is the pod that is gone. A new pod replaces in its place because I deleted it physically, which is good. So uh, if, if an instance goes down, another instance comes in its place. OpenShift is doing its job. Now, it's still in the pending status. Let's wait till it gets to running. It's running now. So let me do a port forwarding to this database. Now, I am doing the same exact thing again. I'm connecting to my local host on port 3306. Show databases. It shows the sample database. I say use sample. And when I say show tables, earlier we insert a table and it's gone. So the data that was written to the database, the previous instance of the, the par is all gone because it is ephemeral. So why did that happen? Our part, when we were writing data to our MySQL par, in case of an ephemeral storage instance, that the data was being written inside the par so when the pod went off, the data also got deleted along with the pod. So although the pod comes back up, the data inside the pod is gone because it's a new instance of pod. So how do we deal with it? That's, that's the place where persistent storage, storage comes into picture. In case of persistent storage, you would have the pod separated out from where you write your data. So you, you would mount your persistent storage onto the pod in which case, for example, if a pod dies for some reason, OpenShift will create a new pod and it will also mount the persistent storage that was that was there before. So you'll not lose any data. Let's see how it works. Now, in order for our applications to use persistent storage, we need to do a couple of things. One, the administrator needs to set up persistent storage or make persistent storage available for the applications to use, which involves making the persistent storage available as what we call persistent volume in OpenShift. We are using NFS here as an example, but you could be using Gluster or Ceph or any other storage technology. Uh, OpenShift supports, uh, uh, or OpenShift currently supports NFS, but very soon it's going to support Gluster, uh, Ceph, and other technologies as well. If you look at the NFS exports, I have uh, a couple of exports here. They are via export wall one and wall two. 
and uh, they are set up as read write sync call squash now as an administrator on the openshift host i'm trying to set up a persistent volume actually i already have a persistent volume so one of them is mounted as pv001 now let me show you what i have i mounted the var export wall one which we have seen here the first one with the name pv001 now let's mount another one as uh, as pv002 i'm just copying this uh, all i'm going to do is say that the name of the volume is pv002 the size in my case is 512 megabytes and i am volume 2 and this is on so and so nfs server this is the ad ip address of my nfs server after making this change i'm just going to create based on this file now it has mounted pv002 so if i do oc get pv i should see two volumes here one is with 5 gigabytes storage and the other one is 512 megabyte storage and it's pv001 and pv002 so i have two different persistent volumes they are not used yet they are they are still available now the job of administrator is done we made the persistent volume available now let's use that persistent volume so i have a, a new project and i am going to create and a, a database using MySQL persistent template. So here you see MySQL persistent template. I'm going to use that and I will edit the parameters. I will give the same username password. We call it sample database. And the capacity that it is asking for is 512 megabytes. Remember we had two persistent volumes. One is 512 megabytes and the other one is five gigabytes. So there are two available and this guy is asking for 512 MB, right? Now let's uh, say create. Now at this time, OpenShift will, will spin up a new pod for this MySQL database. And it will also create what we call persistent volume claim, because this is a persistent database. It will ask for persistent volume claim, which will go and pull the, use one of those persistent volumes available. So let's, I'm using the persistent project. If I say OCGate pods, this MySQL pod is, is spinning up. It's not ready yet. And if I run OCGate PVC, PVC stands for persistent volume claim. And this is done by the user who is asking for it. And if you look at it, it is, it is actually now, it has created a persistent volume claim. And that persistent volume claim is bound to PV0002. Now, going back to the master, if you look at PV001, that was five gigabytes, and PV002 was 512 mega, megabytes, right? We asked for 512 megabytes, so OpenShift has automatically matched. In spite of two being available, it picked the one of the right size, and it got that allocated to the persistent volume claim. Now, if I do run OCGet PV, it shows that the persistent volume 002 is bound to the MySQL wall to the MySQL volume claim that we that, that got created when we created the application. Now let's use this and see how it how it works. Now I'll do the same thing like before. I'll port forward to the the MySQL pod and from the other window I'll try to access the MySQL client. I'll use the sample database. I'll add a table. I'll insert a few users. I see all my users. Exit. Now let me cancel port forwarding. And let me delete the pod like before. OpenShift spins up a new pod again. It's in the pending status. Now it is running. Let me port forward to this again. I'll go back and connect to this new part this time. Use a sample database, show tables. Now the users table that we added before is still there. In case of our non-persistent example, this was missing, right? So let's say 
select star from users. It shows the data. So this is exactly what we wanted. So even if you delete the part, another part comes up, it connects to the same persistent storage as before, and the data is, is available to use, right? So that gives us the advantage of persistent storage behind the part. This is what just one example. You, database is just a simple example. You could be using persistent storage in different ways. Perhaps you could be writing some data as files directly from your application onto the persistent storage, and that, that data is available across multiple parts. So effectively, you could have multiple parts of your application sharing the same persistent storage at the same time. So they could all be writing data into the persistent storage, and it is available across all the applications, right? So to summarize, the administrator creates a persistent volume and makes it available. And uh, the users or the projects can claim the persistent volumes as persistent volume claims. OpenShift will look at the list of available persistent volumes that are available to use, and it will allocate a persistent volume or it will grab a persistent volume of, of, of appropriate storage size that is equal to or a little higher than the the size that is being asked for and that's how it works i hope you enjoyed the video thanks a lot for watching